When you're investing in real estate, you are making a long-term investment. So you're investing for the next decade or two or three decades. You're not just investing for the next six months or the next 12 months. So when you're investing in real estate, you have to make sure that you pick a good location because you can change everything about a property. You can change the way it looks. You can upgrade the bathroom. You can finish the basement. But the one thing that you cannot change is the location of your property. So you want to make sure that you're investing where people want to be in the future, not just where they want to be today. Because if you invest your money into a dying city where people are moving out of, where nobody wants to be, well, not only are your property values going to drop, but you're going to have a very tough time renting this property out, keeping it rented, and making any money on this property. And that's going to be a big pain, not just in your brain, but also in your bank account. So this is where you have to know how do you find a good location for a property. And there's a few different things that you can do. The first thing that you can do is just go onto Google and enter in the city or the neighborhood that you want to invest in and just type in the word population. And what you'll see is you'll get a chart of what the population is and has been for this particular neighborhood or this particular city. And you want to see some sort of upward trend or at the very least a stable trend for this city or neighborhood because if you're seeing populations go down, that's probably not a place where you want to be investing your money for the long term. The second thing that you can do to dissect the location is just go to the city hall of the area that you want to invest and ask the building department what new developments are in the works or potentially could be coming in the future. This is a little known secret of a way that you can get real insider information of what's happening before it even becomes public. And this is actually legal in real estate, but it's illegal in the stock market because if you learn something in the stock market before it hits the public markets, well, now you're doing insider trading and you can go to jail. In real estate, well, it's completely legal. And this is where now you can get a lot of value by just talking to the city, talking to the people that work there, talking to the people that live there to see what's happening or what might be coming in the future before it even hits the mainstream news. This is something that I have done on multiple occasions. I found out I was looking at an apartment complex in a city and I went to the city hall and I asked them about this vacant building that was sitting on this very busy intersection and I asked them if anybody had plans of purchasing this building or anything going on with this building and what he told me was that Walmart was in contract to actually open up a franchise or a store over here in that building. Now, this wasn't public information, or at least I hadn't heard about it until I went to the city hall. But this was great news for me because now I knew Walmart was going to bring a lot of money into this particular area. Because if Walmart comes here, then you're going to see a bunch of other smaller retail stores also pop up. Because now Walmart's going to bring a whole bunch of traffic to this particular area. People are going to want to be here because you're going to see more shops open up. You'll see more restaurants open up because this is going to drive up demand for this particular area. So what you want to see is our businesses moving into this city? Are businesses moving into this neighborhood or are they moving out? If they're moving out, then you might not want to be moving your money in. But if businesses are moving their money in, then this is something that you can consider moving your money into as well. You also really want to pay attention to barriers and boundaries because what you'll see happen is many cities will have some sort of boundary or barrier that will divide a good part and a bad part of a city. Sometimes it'll be a highway, sometimes it'll be a bridge, maybe it's a lake, maybe it's something, a railroad track in the middle that divides a good part of a city from a bad part of a city. And this can make a huge difference because you might see a city as a whole and the city will be growing and people like the city. However, what you might not see from that data is that people are moving from this part of the city to this part of the city. And so if you find a property on this part of the city on sale, you might think it's a great deal because it's in a growing area and a place everybody wants to be. But what you don't see from that data is that everybody wants to be on this side of the highway. I saw this happen on a property that I bought. It was a single family home where there was a highway running right through the city and all the businesses were moving here. You literally had businesses moving from this side of the highway to this side of the highway, and everybody wanted to live on this side of the highway, and the properties on this side were selling for significantly cheaper on this side. Well, I bought a property here because I wanted to be on this side, even though it was more expensive than here, and over the years, it really paid off. The property values here went up significantly faster than the property values here, along with the rental prices and the ease of finding a good tenant because everybody wanted to be on this side, not this side. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.